Hey, it's Arrow. This is pre-vocal defrag. This is where you take from what has been written and you build upon it. I'm sitting inside the house overlooking this forest in South Charlotte right now. Before we take that transition walk, I, I just want to kind of set us up a little bit as to where we're going to be growing and maybe asking different questions about things that move through us. So while I was writing during my morning pages this morning, this thought came to me. I've got what they've got, everything but each other. Physically being in a blind ambition. I'm going to repeat that one more time. I've got what they've got. Everything but each other. Physically being in a blind ambition. And right away, I started questioning myself, um, wondering why such a thought would even move through me. And, and what I came up with with an answer on paper was because I know the soul of the story. People do come here to fit into everything that America is. But those who are already here don't see it. So back to that original quote, okay? I've got what they've got, everything but each other, physically being in a blind ambition. People come here to get what we've got, but those who are here really don't see it. I'll find you out there in the forest here in a couple of minutes. We're on our way right now. All right, we're out in the forest, taking a transition walk. If this is the first time that you've been a part of vocal defrag, the transition walks, we all go through different mindsets, mood swings, but you know what? We're not studying the patterns and the habits of a transition. That is one of the greatest tools you'll ever hold when you ask questions and question the answers. And that's what vocal defrag is all about. I do it not only on paper, like we just talked about at the very beginning, but we also do it out here on the transition walk through this beautiful forest in South Charlotte, North Carolina. It's about 50 degrees. The sun is finally out. We've had three days of raining. Hopefully you can hear those birds in the background. There's a cold breeze out here, so I'm reminded of the reality of what it's like to be in a forest this time of season. This is Easter Sunday, of all things. So the thought has a lot to it. And right away, you might think that, oh, he's talking about what life is like in America, and other people come to be Americanized. And that's not really what the thought is all about. What the thought is about is your own personal life. There are so many things that we want, we think we have to have. We want to shape our own walk and way by wearing what other people are wearing. We want to use the same smartphones. We want to have the same lawnmowers. We're doing everything we can to basically humanize ourselves because it looks like they over there are having a better life than I am. So therefore, if I have what they have, does that mean I'm going to be a better and a greater person? That's not true. That's not true at all because the interpretation of a song has so many meanings. And I'm going to go in a route that really is way the hell out there, but I think I'm going to be able to pull you back in. The interpretation of a song. We could be listening to the same exact piece of music. My, my guilt trip is, is that I don't hear the lyrics of a song. My ear hears drum beats, bass beats, the full orchestration in the background. I don't hear lyrics. So therefore, my interpretation is, man, listen, listen to the way that it was blended together. The harmonies of so many different instruments, the harmonics and everything that was that was really required to bring it forward. Whereas you might be going, man, that's a love song. I mean, that had to be the saddest love song that guy had ever written. So in a way, it's like that in itself is kind of like a judgment call in, in, in the way that I, I would love to be able to sit down and listen to a piece of music because of the lyrics. And you might be saying, well, man, I, I didn't even know that was taking place with that drum roll or why that cymbal had to be hit. And, and, and what happened? Why did the engineer blend it there? Very deep questions. Maybe you don't love music as much as I do. You see what I'm saying? This is the division. This is what, you know, starts to happen when I've got what you've got, you've got what I've got. We have everything but each other. Why aren't we talking about it? Why aren't we talking about the indifferences? Why aren't we talking about how we can help each other get into positions of, of security, certainty, getting into a place of, hey, aren't we in this together? But I think that has to start with us as individuals. You've got to be able to ask the question and question the answers of yourself to be able to say, hey, I didn't know that about me. I, you know, maybe I've thought about it once or twice, but I just wrote it off as just being a, a mood. Yeah, I was, I was moody that day. 
But you know what, though? The seed has already been planted. If that reaction to something around you took place, you've already thought about it. You've already put that into a position where it was one day going to get a voice, and it happened to be in this moment where you were in transition. Did you ask the question and question the answers? Did you build upon those answers to find out, really, who is it that you are and trying to become? I've got what you've got, you've got what I've got, we've got everything but each other. And then I put on there, it's a blind ambition? Sure, sure. I would love to feel as happy as this person over here. I would love to know how they get to that happy point. Now, being an interviewer, a conversationalist, I'm going to call you out. I'm going to ask you these questions that others are just ignoring. Instead of assuming that you're naturally happy, the truth of the matter is, you could be wearing a mask. You could be putting on a candy-coated plastic bathroom mirror smile because you don't want to deal with what's going on inside your heart. So therefore, if you act happy and people feel happy, then you yourself are living off their reflection, how they're receiving you, only to find yourself in the front seat of your car, in the bathroom, maybe at home in the living room with no TV on, and you're wondering, what the hell has gotten into me? Why can't I shake this feeling? Oh, I must be depressed. Let me take a pill. Let me do something else. Let me, let me go into Amazon and let me go buy something because they've got it. I've seen it. They got it. They're wearing it. They, they, they got it. They, so, so, so therefore it must be making them super happy. I, I, I got to have what they've got. <laughs> and then when you get it, blind ambition. Yeah. You didn't get what they've got. The interpretation. We can say the same thing about a piece of art. What you see in that piece of art versus what I see are two completely different things. I had to deal with this with my own art because I would spend countless hours on a canvas. And I made a mistake. I would ask my wife, what do you think? Hoping that she too would be in love with it as much as I was and still am. And there was really never an art piece that she felt attached to like I did. In fact, transparency, one of my favorite pieces of art, I actually gave away to a good friend because he loved the art, whereas in my house, I was asked to remove the piece of art from the wall. And I thought, well, the best thing here is just to get rid of it. Okay, what, you think I'm alone here? You, th- you, you think this is all about me? It's not. Because I know something has happened in your personal life, and you've given away stuff because somebody didn't like it. You, you, you've also purchased things, and you've done things in your life. How about all these people that spend thousands of dollars to build these careers? And you know what? It doesn't pan out. But yet the person that inspired you or the moment that brought you inspiration and or the momentum to take a chance, it looked like they were happy. It looked like they were making it. And you just wanted a piece of that. I've got it. You've got it. We've got everything but each other. Blind ambition. What is it that you truly are looking for and think you need in your life? that you are not getting, and yet you continue to spend time, energy, and money on what they have because they look happy, because they look like they are the definition of success. So how do we break this habit? By asking the questions, questioning the answers. When I think I've got to have something, I take it to the page. I ask myself, do I really see it the way that I'm feeling it? Two completely different experiences. Am I feeling it the way that I'm seeing it? Ask the questions, question the answers. And when things don't pan out and you realize, oh hell, I'm not getting that time back. What do you do? How do you feel? Where do you grow from? Before entering this forest in South Charlotte, North Carolina on this 50 degree Easter Sunday, I really did question myself harshly about even talking about that subject. And the subject really is very heavy on my heart. Heavy in the way of 
What is your interpretation? Are you going to think differently than what I do in the way of saying, hey, look, he's, he's got a deeper, deeper story here. He's just hiding it. Yeah, he's, he's one of those hiders when it comes to words. He's not really expressing the way that he should. And that's what you face. You face that every day when you're a broadcaster, a podcaster, a communicator, an author, a musician, that the interpretation on the other side is going to be read a different way. But what I want to do is I want to put it on your path. When you're sitting under a beautiful sun, no matter where you are on this planet, the temperature is just right. You might have a little drink in front of you. Maybe you had like a great Easter dinner. You're feeling great in that moment. Where does your mind go when all of a sudden things change your mindset? What did having a memory just do to your beautiful moment? It no longer feels like that beautiful day. Nope. Gone, just like that. I've got it. They've got it. We've got everything but each other. It starts with us. Do you have you? Do you know who you are? What sort of questions have you been asking all these years and you've been ignoring because you think it's weird that you would ask yourself questions? How do you bring something forward? Or do you set it aside? There is such a thing that I truly believe in, and I talk with more authors about it all the time, all the time. Hider writers. Hider writers are people who will be extremely creative with their words on a page, and then they hide it. They put it in a box. They hide it in the attic. They put it underneath their beds. They put it in the closet. And then one day, they happen to trip across it. Or, 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 the one day... You're no longer on the planet, and your family has just found it. Oh, jeez. Yeah, yeah, you can't defend yourself now. You, you can't sit there and say, well, you know, I, I was just trying to write a book. And what they're going to do is they're going to have their own interpretation. But if you were a little bit freer with your thinking pattern, and you shared your points of direction, there would be fewer questions from the outside world, because they would have a better understanding of who you are. I've got what they've got. They've got what I've got. We've got everything but each other. Let's go ahead and take the steering wheel here and turn to the left now. What do you think you've got that they want? Honestly, what what are you carrying that you think they want? Is there something that you're projecting? What happens if you face more of the, I don't want that because I don't want to look like that? Ask the questions. Question the answers. If you've got what they've got and they've got what you've got, what do you think they want from you? What is it that they see in you that they think will benefit their lives? That's the connection or the disconnection. Ultimately, through each and every one of us as individuals, no team can take shape unless the collaboration is blessed with people who are not afraid to share what they've got. What do you think you've got that other people want? That's the blind ambition. We're going through it every day. This is the reason why I transition walk. This is why I defrag. Asking the questions, questioning the answers. What is your truth? What do you have that they want? And what do they have that you want? And if you had everything, would you have each other? Ask the questions, question the answers. I'm Errol, and that's Vocal Defrag.